So just standard post-procedure care in order, you kind of touched a little bit about it, like you keep them for three um, hours. Are you having them lay on that flank, uh, like with a you know rolled up towel behind them or anything like that to keep pressure on the kidney? Uh, I don't, but like I usually go in the back and so I just have them lay supine. Back. Um, yeah. yeah, on their back. But um, yeah, I mean, that might be a good idea to also put like a little towel underneath them to like have some added pressure, you know, because sometimes like you're, you're biopsying within like kind of a crook of the back, like where that's right. like not making ta- contact with the bed surface. I haven't done that, but that's a pretty good idea. Um, yeah, that's Doesn't what I typically anything. do. No, it's just, I just have the nurse yep. to say, hey, roll up a towel, put it along their flank, right where my, where, where right where the bandage is, so they know. And then they just kind of lay, and then they'll support them with like a pillow on their other sure, side, sure. lay on that side. And then, yeah, mine's typically three hours. I, I won't let them eat for another hour or two. And if they're pain-free and their vital signs are stable, then I'll let them eat um, at like one, maybe two hours, depending on how they, you know, how it went. And then I kind of feel like they're out of the woods and they can go ahead and eat. And, you know, but sometimes they, you know, they wake up and they have some tenderness and I will just take the ultrasound machine over to post-op or post, you know, uh, day surgery and I'll scan them real quick and make sure there's no hematoma. If there's a hematoma, I'll take them to CT. And if there's a big hematoma, then I'll take them to the lab. Um, it's uh, it's rare, but it can happen. And uh, you just got to be kind of mentally prepared for it, I think. Hold on, when you say rare, like, I mean, because I feel like this is like one of the complications. Like, you know, like you often give a, a patient, like I almost always say pain, bleeding, infection. At some point during any procedure that I'll mention. And then I mention all the specific things. Yeah. I mean, like infection to me is rare, like in any of the biopsies and stuff we do. Like, I don't know if I've ever seen an infection. Um, that's not true. I'm, I'm sure I have, but I just can't think of it. But like bleeding, well, I feel like ble- this comes inter- up. Ble- bleeding itself is not rare. In- intervention on bleeding uh, is rare. I think. Oh, really? So like you've rarely taken your patients back to the cath lab? I've rarely taken, yeah, knock on wood. I've rarely, t- I mean, the last time I had to do this was, and granted, I you know, I took some breaks from being in the hospital, but was literally like five years ago. Yeah, probably, yeah, 2017. I remember I had a bleed that I had to actually embolize. So, but, you know, you just jinxed me. So the next renal biopsy that I get, I'll just expect to take to the lab. I would I would love to like get some, I, I wish we could do an audience poll um, because this, and, and maybe like I'm taking mine to the cath lab too soon or something, but like I've taken, like, you know, in the seven years I've been doing it, I don't know, maybe like one a year or back well, to the cath lab. You're pro- Chris, you're probably doing more than I am. Oh, we do I a mean, ton you're... of renal. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a good point. We do we do a ton of renal biopsies. Yeah. Um, but okay, th- that's a good well, point. Well, you're a full time um, practitioner. I'm part time practitioner. So yeah, you know, by sheer volume, you're okay. st- st- statistically more likely to have I see. I these see. than than I am. But and and that being said, yeah, when I was doing it full time and doing a lot of them. That's when I was having these. And so, yeah, one a year probably sounds probably about right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's still rare. I mean, one a year when, you know I mean? Like how many renal biopsies do you do in a year? 50, a hundred, you know, 50 to a hundred probably. I feel like it's like 150. Um, I don't yeah. know. I'd have to get the numbers. And, so, and I don't, I don't know. I, w- I would actually, I wish I had my numbers with me because I, because it, I guess like there's also the thing that like it sticks with you. Like anytime you yeah, have totally. like something like that and it sticks with you because like, these are like the last patients you want to take back to the cath lab. They're usually sick. They usually have renal impairment. Yeah. Um, but that's yeah. why I hate them because that memory <laughs> sure. of th- sure. that trauma, like you, you see it in their face. They're scared. I know. I know. And you're like, this, you know, I, it's it's hard because you're kind of like, I told you this could be, this could happen, but they're scared and you're scared because maybe their blood pressure is tanking and you know they're in a lot of pain. And you got to get that embolized very fast. And so that's really what sticks. I mean, I, re- I remember the patient's family's faces, mm-hmm. the patient's, everything turned out great, but I remember that traumatic, the, that trauma of, uh, you know, just having to talk to them about, look, the, it's bleeding, it's bleeding fast. We got to take care of this now. 